Hey, I'm Scott, and today we're talking about the brand new app from Zeppin to go together with their new Micro 2 Plus motorized slider. This video is sponsored by Zeppin, but it's just a tutorial, not a review. If you do want to see my non-sponsored review of the Micro 2 Plus, I'll put a link for that down below. So let's just jump right in and get the app connected. This is the app called Zeppin Lab. If you have the original Micro 2, 600 or 800 with the motor, you'll need to update the firmware to use it with this new app. If you want to see how to do that, I have another video which I'll link below. When you open the app, the homepage has options to connect to the slider as well as a future fluid head, follow focus, and trigger. There's also an icon in the top left corner to go through a quick start guide, and a little cog in the top right to upgrade your firmware or select your language settings. I've had better luck opening the app first and then powering on the slider, so let's go ahead and get it powered on now. After you power on the slider, tap the little icon up top and slide over that little switch at the bottom to connect to it. If you do this again, it should automatically connect each time from now on, but if you want to totally reset it, just click clear selected at the bottom. In the future, you'd go through and also connect the other modules one by one, and then when you're done, click done at the bottom of the page. So for this new home screen, I'm actually going to start at the bottom. There's one on the left for panning and tilting, which is not yet available, and then one on the right for a simple left and right movement of the slider. With the motor power button facing you, the joystick direction matches the slider movement direction. And this joystick is also speed related, so the further you pull it, the faster it will move. All of the other little icons in that bottom section are related to not yet released additional modules. Skipping around the page just a bit, you can set six waypoints labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are points that the slider will move through automatically. Let's show you by just simply setting an A and a B point. The letters will turn purple when you set them, and the selected starting point will have a purple box around it. So right now, B is set as the starting point. If I play my movement, you can see that it goes from B to A. But now if I select play once more, it's going to jump back to B before it begins and now move through that B to A path. If I select A as my starting point and click play, since it's now at A, you can see it just goes through that movement and that's all there is to it. Under that, you can set the speed from 1 to 100% with the slider, or you can just tap the percent display and type it in manually. Then it will calculate the time that it will take to move from A to B and display that at the top where it says play time. Right now we're dealing with 2.9 seconds, so let's play it through and see if that is true. First move to A. There we go. So as you've seen, we have the play icon down the bottom to play through that A to B movement. And again, remember that whichever box is selected with the purple square around it is going to be your starting point. If the camera is not currently at that spot, it will first move there and then start the movement. Next to that, you have the little looped motion icon. So if you click that, it will turn blue. And now if you play your motion, it will go back and forth between A to B to A to B, all at the speed that you have set. To stop it, obviously, just press the stop button. Now, if you want to cancel a waypoint, just long press it and it will ask you if you want to cancel it. Click OK and it's canceled. Let's cancel A as well. And now you can start over. There's one more icon down at the bottom that looks almost like four squares. If you tap that, you can cycle between some different pages. Before going into those other pages, you do have to set an A and a B point. So in the time lapse, in the stop motion modes, for example, it will move, the slider will move from A to B. So if you don't have an A and B point set, you can't go into those pages. The other pages that we have are intelligent time lapse mode, customized time lapse mode, and stop motion mode. There are also panorama mode, matrix mode, and camera mode. And as you can see, all of those require the modules which are not yet released. Also, of course, in real life, you will have to connect the motor to your camera with a shutter release cable for the time lapse or the stop motion to actually work and take control of your camera. I don't have that here because this is just a demonstration, but I will also show you actually going through and setting up a real time lapse in just a minute. So if we look at intelligent time lapse mode, it explains in the app that you can input shutter and interval time and the other parameters will be calculated for you. It will calculate this based on 24 frames per second video and follow that start and stop point that you set as your waypoints on the first page. 
Once you click into that page, you can see all the information on the top half is the information that is automatically calculated. How many photos it will take, the 24 frames per second setting that is used to calculate the final video playtime displayed right below that. And finally, the waiting time. This is the time it will take to do that whole process. Below that, you can set your shutter and interval time. And you can see, for example, if I set a longer interval time, it will take longer to go through the process displayed here as waiting time. The same goes for shutter, of course. If you have noise reduction turned on in camera, you can also toggle that on and it will automatically compensate for the time that it takes your camera to do that. If you scroll down further, you can change the speed, which will require you to take more or less photos, depending on which direction you go. And of course, that will affect the play time of the video and the time that it takes you to actually go through this whole process, which is automatically calculated up top. The last thing you have down below is not really a setting, but a guide. However, it will affect your settings. It will just kind of guide you uh, with advice for interval times based on different situations. This is good if you're new to time lapse and you don't really know where to start to get good results. So for example, if you're taking a city scene uh, time lapse, it will automatically set your interval to two seconds for you. To sum it all up, in this mode, you can set your shutter time and interval speed, as well as, of course, the speed of the slider movement itself. And of course, that A and B point that determines where your slider is going to move to and from that we set in the previous video page. The rest of the settings, the video time and the amount of time that it will actually take to perform that time lapse will be then calculated and displayed on screen for you, as well as the number of shots to make that work. Uh, so you can adjust things and see them reflected in real time if you want to, for example, make sure that you finish your time lapse process in a period of a certain number of minutes. You can adjust the settings and see how that reflects in the actual numbers up at the top of the page in real time, intelligently intelligent time-lapse mode. All right, so let's just actually go through and set up a real time-lapse for you so you can see how it works in real life. Next up in customized time-lapse mode, you can also set the number of photos and the frames per second manually. The final video's playtime and the amount of time it will take to record the time-lapse displayed as waiting time are displayed on the middle of the page. Of course, you still set your shutter and interval time down below to match your camera as well as your noise reduction settings. If you need to take a 30 frames per second time-lapse, for example, this is going to be the best mode for you. Finally, we have the stop motion page. And again, remember that to actually let the app take pictures for you, uh, you do need to connect this with a shutter release cable. This is similar to time-lapse mode, except that you will manually push the shutter button down the bottom by yourself in the app to take each picture when you're ready. So there's no automatic interval time to set as there were on the previous pages. Again, the slider will move from the start and stop waypoints that you set on the first page. Of course, I don't have a shutter release cable connected right now, but you can see if I push the shutter button in the app to start to hypothetically take photos, you can see down below how many are left. And if you want to restart the process at any point, just click reshoot and we'll go back to the beginning. Now, I'm not much of a stop motion videographer, but hey, let's play around with it and I'll show you uh, setting one up in real life.
And that's about it for now until those new modules come out. Hopefully everything was clear, but of course there is a lot built into here and I'm looking forward to seeing the expanded functionality when those new modules are ready, which hopefully should be soon. For now, let me know down below if you have any questions or comments about the modes and functions that are currently available and I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, if you did like this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thank you for watching.